plight, the work that needed to be done to our people because we had been so thoroughly stripped, robbed, and de denied everything that a human being was supposed to have to be called a human being. We were called dead. And he knew that kind of works. And the man who uttered those words, that Georgia born black man, they say that Georgia produced giants. Well, they produced a giant in this man. He was only 5'7", but yes, he was a giant. He was born Elijah Poole, but because of the wonderful work that he was doing and is doing among the black man and woman in the hells of North America, he became known as the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. All praise is due to Allah for that wonderful human being. However, I did not meet Master Farad Muhammad. I did not meet the most among us and he is just a few inches taller than his uh, teacher but he walks heavy in the land as a matter of fact we can say that he is the most famous Muslim on the planet I don't care when you hear his name they, you heard the commercial when E.F. Hutton talks to everybody listen no when this man speaks everybody listens even his open enemy those hidden enemies listen to him and the man that I'm talking about he is our illustrious leader he is our friend our teacher our guide he is the Messiah in our midst, the Honorable Minister, Louis Farrakhan. It is in their names, dear Holy Family, I greet you all once again with the greeting words of peace. As-salamu alaykum. How are we this morning, family? All praise is due to Allah. Let me just clear a few things right off the top. Thank you so much for being here on time and having a seat to be prepared to hear the keynote speaker today, Student Minister Rodney Muhammad, as he brings to you some of the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I, all I can say is listen intently to what our brother has to say. And if you can, write something down because you can't remember everything, but something is going to get hurled at you like a rock. It's going to hit you in a certain way. And if you don't, can't recall it, write it down and go home and study it. That'll be your homework assignment. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. The next thing I'd like to say is thank you all for submitting to the check procedure because it is very necessary today. You know, people don't have no respect for the houses of God anymore. They will walk in and slaughter everybody in the house. Matter of fact, didn't they just rob E9? I don't know what, how, what all the specifics about that. Sounds like it might have been, well, maybe I shouldn't say that. <laughs> but anyway, we know that it was robbed. <laughs> and uh, here again, security has to be intact. So that's what we have today. So thank you for submitting to the check procedure. And the next thing I would like to say is I thank you all for the charity that you have given already. Yes, We're going to have a charity portion at the end of the meeting where we will ask the physical, you know, to help keep the lights and everything on. But no, no, no. The charity I'm talking about right now is your time. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us, that you had the courage and the desire to come out and hear the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. So, dear family, without any further delay, now that I've cleared that, uh, I don't have to get, get a talk on it. <laughs> Let's go to the next portion of our meeting. We have a student uh, in the ministry. He's a wonderful brother. He's over our processing class. We all know him. I mean, if, if you need a bow tie, you need a, a book that maybe you can't get it from Chicago right now, you can go to this brother and he can bring it to you. However, he is still a student in the ministry. He's a hardworking soldier. So let's bring him on now with a loving round of applause. Brother, our brother, David Hassan. Assalamu alaikum. of Allah, the best of beneficent, the most merciful. I bear witness that regardless of where we are on the planet, regardless of land, label, or language, that there is but one God. And we believe that he appeared in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad. We thank you for intervening in our affairs and raising up for us the most honorable Elijah Muhammad to be his messenger, Messiah. We thank the both of them for their life, for their labor, and their sacrifice. Uh, and their foresight in preparing for us a man for these last days at the time of the end of the wicked world of white supremacy, that we would have a guide, that we would have a man who would be a criterion that would keep us on track, that we would have a reminder that God is with us today, that we would have a divine Messiah and the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. It is the name of these three great men that I greet all of you this morning in the greeting words of peace we say in the Arabic language, Assalamu alaikum. Alaykum. How's everyone doing this morning? Fine, sir. 
All praise is due to Allah. I'm feeling good myself, feeling grateful this morning, huh? All praise is due to Allah for life and another day. We know a lot of people are traveling and seeing their families and things, but family is here too, is that right? And our community needs our attention, it needs our focus, and it needs our work. So that's why we're here, praise be to Allah. Uh, as we pre uh, prepare, as Student Minister Joseph Muhammad was saying for our keynote presenter today, Student Regional Minister Rodney Muhammad, first of all, I just want to say thank you to him for the opportunity to say a few words this morning and for his life and labor with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan for over 40 years. We thank him for what he's done here in Philadelphia, uh, for the greater city of Philadelphia. We thank him for what he's done for the Nation of Islam. So you're going to hear uh, a message today that is designed to get us through in this generation what we've been going through, right? Yes, but now it's, we're at the time of fulfillment now. Mm -hmm. We're at the time where it all begins to make sense of why we labored and why we struggled and why we sacrificed. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God has something stored up for this present generation and we have to pass on the knowledge of our history and our past. Is that right? Yes, sir. All praise is due to Allah. We thank you for your time and attention this morning. Each one of you that has come through processing, as uh, Brother Joseph was saying, for every uh, convert, every conversation, every question that you asked, it's all for our good as well as yours. We encourage you to come to the Nation of Islam. We encourage you to ask questions. Is that right? Yes, sir. Your questions help us. Huh? We thank you and we encourage you to continue on your journey. We all have questions and we all need answers. Is that right? Some answers you'll find in a book. We need to read more, is that right? Yes, sir. But the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches us about the value in each and every one of us because sometimes the solution and the answers that we're looking for and waiting for will come from men and women. Sometimes when we see more value in ourselves, we'll stop waiting on the mystery God to come bring us bread, is that right? And we'll begin to make the bread for ourselves. All praises are due to Allah for the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Again, Student Minister Rodney Muhammad is going to bring us a message and if you are, you know, if you've been coming out, you know it's focused on self-improvement. Is that right? Yes, sir. It's focused on the Muslim program. Is that right? Yes, sir. On uh, us being the change, an example of that change that we need to see. But we need a teacher. Is that right? Yes, sir. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan took the word of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and opened it up for us. Is that right? Yes, sir. He gave it to us in a way that we could examine it, we could analyze it, and apply it. Is that right? And that application is the part that a lot of times we missed, even in school, because nobody in the books looked like us. So we just did things to pass. Is that right? We just did things to get a grade. Is that right? But if you don't see yourself in the picture, you don't see the need to apply that which you're learning. But if you knew you're the father of architecture, you're the father of engineering, you're the father of mathematics. Huh? And when I say father, I'm not just saying that particularly for the men, but our ancestors. Is that right? Men and women working together. Families that were strong enough to build civilizations. That is where we come from. So now it's time when we get our hands on what they stole from us, when God raises a messenger for us and we can begin to listen to that messenger and hear that messenger, it's only on us when this meeting is over to go home and put into practice that which we have heard. Is that right? And you're going to hear from a man today that has most definitely done that in his life. And we're now faced with that challenge today for this generation. The program of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us to accept our own and be ourselves. Is that right? Yes, to love ourselves. Is that right? Yes, and to do for ourselves. To be clean and upright and industrious. He said that separation is the best and the only solution for the black nation. Is that right? Yes, we tried everything else. Is that right? We sang, we shall overcome. Is that right? And we're in the same condition we are today as we were 50 years ago. Is that right? The only thing that's going to change is us. Speaking of change, all praises due to Allah. We thank you for your donations and your charity. As you can see, there's some changes going on in this house. Is that right? All praises due to Allah. You know, I was studying something dealing with business, and they said in five years, 80% of everything you see will be different. In five years, 80% of everything you see will change. Remember when you would buy a phone and it flipped open? You remember when the phone didn't have a camera on it? I remember reading a report in 2007 that said, actually it was around 2005, but it said by 2007, around that time, every phone will have a camera and every phone will have certain features on it. 
And I work in communications, but this was big because as soon as that happened, you notice the, the attention on police brutality change. Is that right? Because now everybody's got a phone. Now with social media, you can see the reality of this world that we're living in almost in an instant. Is that right? But God is going to use their technology not just to, to play games and, you know, this social media thing, it is what it is. But now you can hear the teachings of the most honorable Muhammad 24 hours a day. Is that right? We got Final Call Radio. Is that right? We got store.finalcall.com. Is that right? We have so many ways to plug into the teachings during the week. We have so many ways to hear the honorable minister Louis Farrakhan. It's only for us today to focus and not be distracted by the times. But I'm saying that everything is changing. Why don't we change? Hmm? When you travel abroad, you must know the language of the people who are in the place that you're traveling to. Well, in the nation of Islam, we are the worker bees. We are the worker ants. We are the working men and women cooperating with God to bring about a universal government and a universal change, wherein we all can live together in peace, and the way that we live together in peace is righteousness. The most Ambalaj Muhammad said Islam means righteousness. Y'all all right? So today you're going to hear a truth. Don't think that it's foreign. Don't think that we have to convert you to that which is your nature. All you have to do is accept your own and be yourself, family. At this time, let us bring to this roster my student regional minister here in the Delaware Valley, your brother and my student regional minister, Rodney Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. How is everyone? In the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, the one God to whom praise is due, the Lord of the worlds. We thank Almighty God, who is the revealer of all truth, the sender of all the prophets, uh, the bearers of witness of his truth. We make no distinction between them. We thank Allah for the Torah that he revealed to Moses. We thank him for the gospel and his servant, Jesus. We thank him for the revelation of the Holy Quran and Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But as a student of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad's life-giving message, I'm most grateful to Allah for his own intervention in our affairs and the divine person of Master Fahd Muhammad, to whom praise is due forever. We cannot thank him enough for the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, uh, his servant, um, so close to him, that he changed the entire discussion on this planet about God. That's monumental. You kind of have to let that sink in. Um, I thank Allah for his faithfulness in his teacher and his belief there would have been convulsions in the earth had there not been checkpoints to stop tyrants from overtaking the planet. Most people don't pay attention to the earth being three-fourths covered with water. We literally could be drowned out by the waters of the earth. But the moon's light puts a check on the waters and brings back the tide and holds it from overtaking the land. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the prophets of God are symbolized in moonlight because they check tyrants from overtaking the planet. And the moon is definitely a light. But you notice that when the moon is out casting the light, it doesn't change the day. It's still nighttime, even though a light is out there. And that's to teach us that 
as great as the prophets were, they couldn't overtake Satan and the darkness of this world. The moon's light is only out for a while in the night and then it disappears. Most of us are asleep at that time, so we don't see that the darkest time of the night is in the disappearance of the moon before the sun comes up. So the world was at its darkest point when its last prophet had passed on and the wisdom of that prophet, his light had been extinguished and there was nothing but darkness here. So there's only left the sunlight to come. And that's what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad preached now. That sun has come. You look to the east for it to rise, but the prophecy said, no, nah, in the last day, it would not rise in the east. Huh? In the last day, that sun would rise in the west. Jesus saw him and said, as the light shining from the east, even unto the west. So the light was in the east, but it came west. But the light, the Quran says, was neither eastern nor western. It's a brand new teaching. And if you look to the teaching that came from the east and the false teaching and the false light that was taught in the west, you'll never understand this light. That's why so few are coming to the light of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and many are running to the false light of the present world. Jesse Jackson said something about the light one time when he was describing Reaganism. He described, and I have that book about Reaganomics because Ronald Reagan's coming in at the time that the preaching of Farrakhan was rising. And he said, Reaganomics is an economic program that takes from the needy and gives to the greedy. But he said, Reaganism is a spirit and a false light. And the people who were in darkness ran toward the light thinking it was the light that saves, but it was a train coming. And so they just ran over folks with uh, a whole host of new and cruel policies. Master Fahd Muhammad's coming is like the sun's coming after the darkest hour of the night. And we thank Allah for the most honorable Elijah Muhammad because he accepted the light. And I heard Brother David saying, see, you, you're not worried about joining this. So one of them said it and said, this is about acceptance. And Jesus prophesied in the book of Luke, I believe in the fourth chapter, that it would be the acceptable year of the Lord. He wasn't taking acceptances every year. But in this day, he's taking acceptances. So when we joined the nation of Islam, we found out we really didn't join. We were being invited to accept our own and be ourselves. Praise be to Allah. This uh, is a new hour. And from everything that we read and the notes we've compared, we don't expect everybody to understand when you lived under a liar all your life, not part of it. It ain't like you got tricked somewhere when you were there. You and I were born tricked. 
And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, when you're born in something, it's very difficult to get you out of it because when you're born in it, you think that's the only reality. In the movie Malcolm X, they're uh, in the prison and the chaplain comes up and when he's questioned, he says, God is white. Isn't it obvious? And Denzel Washington playing Malcolm says, that's obvious. But see, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us the people in that part of the earth had color. And now they're admitting it. So when a truth is brought in a world crafted in falsehood, you have to expect to be opposed. The first people going to oppose you are the liars. Because they on record telling you that they gave you the truth. Huh? So Master Fahd Muhammad's coming and, and finding someone who would be a 100. We don't say other people weren't affected by his coming, but somebody became a 100% convert. He's looking for somebody that when he steps to the side, this man, as they say, will keep it 100. That's the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And now the two of them have to go to work because they can see that we're going to stumble. And as we get further and further and further from his light, it will become more difficult to live the life that he demands. Which means we get weaker and weaker in our commitment to the light and we're in a period where we can go so far and then we have to go back and rededicate ourselves. Am I talking to somebody today now? Because I know I've been in the nation now nearly 42 years and I can't tell you how many times we've had to rededicate ourselves after dedication. That means that uh, it's getting harder to hold on to the life that's been revealed to us. So I thank Allah for the kind of servant that they gave us. Because he rededicated himself. And when somebody does something after a fall, that makes their heart um, more sensitive to our struggle. And that's why the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan have put up with us this long. Don't grade your own paper and think he's putting up with you because you're doing great. But we're not doing as great as we could do. I advise everybody to listen to his words to Moss number seven when he dedicated their renewal of it and how the work there has not equaled yet what they did before. And you know, sometimes you can write something off that, well, okay, that's what they did then. But as I listen to him, he's expecting <laughs> that they equal what they did. And he described what they did. So he showed in that field what could be done. And he's really saying to them, it can be done again. So um, I thank Allah for coming in the person of Master Farad Muhammad, raising the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I thank the two of them in the eternal sense of the word for giving us their servant, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So I greet you with the greeting words of peace again. of salamu alaykum. Praise, Praise be to Allah.
can't get away from talking about our duty to the Messiah. But before we go into that, I want to talk to us about getting geared up for the week we got coming. This Saturday, we're getting ready to put commercials out and flyers out to talk about our first real community meeting in our new location about the gun violence going on throughout the country and throughout our own city. Not out of frustration over we got to stop this killing. Because the knowledge that can stop the killing, according to the Messiah, is already here. We're not looking for a solution. What we're looking for are people accepting the solution that has come. Allah says in the Quran that he will change not the condition of a people till they first change it themselves. That's not a play on words. That's saying that until we accept in our own hearts change, you can't make change. That's what that's saying. And if it's not accepted in our own hearts, then we can't expect to have change out there. What if every black man in Philadelphia that has made a child, whether you live with that child or not, was committed not to the whole city, just to their address. Just to those that belong to them. To say, we're just gonna, we, we're gonna make sure that we work with the ones that we have brought to the planet. Man, we'd stop this killing overnight. If every black man had listened to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, uh, from the Million Man March. Join an organization. See, that's doing something for our people. If we just did that, if I belong to an organization, then somebody could point to me and say, yeah, brother, you belong to this organization, but your son is out there carjacking people. They could point to me and say, you hypocrite. How could you be in this organization talking about you trying to make positive change and you got sons that are sticking up people? If I feel any shame, because the honorable Elijah Muhammad said, you can't change a man if you can't shame him. If I feel any shame, it'll make me go home to my own sons and, and, and stop them from it. That would at least be those, I got two sons, that would at least be two that are not on record doing it. But every man don't belong to an organization. Every black man. Every black man in this city don't belong to something that's trying to make positive change. We just got a lot of black men that say they doing their own thing. But your own thing is filling up the funeral home. Because you've left sons who are doing their own thing. And really, it's not their own thing. Uh, this is a science of evil that's being worked on us right now. But you could go talk to people about that and, and they don't fully grasp that. They say, no, uh, we're responsible for what we do. Well, if we're responsible for what we do, then why aren't we taking responsibility for bringing about the change? So Saturday, we're going to be reaching out citywide for a meeting. And we have, we have a guest, guest student minister in, a fabulous young man. As far as I'm concerned, a fabulous young man. We're the first larger city, regional city, that ever had him as a guest. We saw him way off, even before the Honorable Louis Farrakhan gave him the name. 
he was in Philadelphia. Because you can see these young men. And I want young men that are coming in to see him because we ain't going to be here forever. We have not formed yet what the scripture said of this last man. The last man they said, um, unto us, you know, a child is given. But look what it says. It don't say a study group would be on his shoulders. Don't even say a mosque or a region would be on his shoulders. It said a government would be on his shoulders. You, we're on our way to forming something. We're not finished yet. We have not formed a government yet. Don't call this a government. We have not formed that yet. The new world must have a new world government. So um, with, our, with our guest student minister, Brother Nuri Muhammad, it's an insult. Not to him, it's an insult to the Messiah to have him here and you don't have your house full. You can't fill up a house that you didn't even come to. So we're still talking about our duty to the Messiah, but everything we do to fill your house that's what concerned J. Edgar Hoover. I have the book COINTELPRO. Right, right. And Mr. Hoover sent documents out to the FBI agents about his concern. And if you go over the documents carefully, front rostrum looks nice, but that ain't what concerned him. Doorposts is important, but that ain't what it was important to Mr. Hoover. Mr. Hoover said, let's hold up on attacking them because their houses are full with the people. And that's the same thing Jesus said in Matthew. They said, after he spoke these words, they wanted to kill him, but they feared the people. Right. If he didn't have no people there, Looked like they'd have gone on with the idea that they had in their mind. But the number of people that was listening to him, it put a check on their thinking. And they said, no, we got to find a way to get between him and the people. But we can't afford to be on the wrong side of the people. Because you can get rid of somebody and not kill their name. You can kill them, but if you don't kill their name in the people, the people will get you. Huh? I study, I don't watch, I study the crown and how that woman held that post for 70 years. Her grandmother told her when she was 26, she said, I have seen three great monarchies go down. One was her husband's cousin, who after mistreating the people in Russia as a czar, needed to escape now because Lenin and then were taken over they were called the Bolsheviks and they were taking over Russia. They were going to get rid of all that imperial kind of rule. And um, he was looking for a place for asylum. So he wrote his cousin, who was a monarch in England. But they felt if we bring them here, the people in England may rise up against us. So they denied him entry into England. And so when the soldiers came in to march him out, they thought they were getting ready to get on a train and start heading toward England. They put that whole family up and gunned them all down. 
They did the same thing to the other monarch rules. I'm just giving you an example. And the people rose up and overthrew every last one of them. So this woman in England who just died, she, she had to learn from those before her how to hold on to the monarchy. Soon as she died, if you notice the papers in England, they say, do we even need this kind of leadership? And I remember the words of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, it's dangerous to be a leader today. Why, Brother Minister, is it dangerous to be a leader today? Because the people will get you. If they find out that you misled them and misused them, God is stirring the hearts of the people against that kind of leadership. So I would study, and I'm, I invite you to study other governments and see what's happening in their countries. They're in Qatar right now with the soccer thing and the people saying, well, we don't accept LGBT thing over here. And people trying to wear pads and all of that, you mess around, get your head chopped off. Going around in other cultures in that. As strict as Iran is, they won't even let McDonald's over there. But killing one of them sisters because her hijab wasn't tight enough or whatever, the people that rose up on them, they probably won't be able to stop this revolution. See what I'm trying to show you? All the old order and how to handle people, the life-giving teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is the most up-to-date, <laughs> modern-time teaching on how to handle Islam today. You can run there and think that you are graduating into something greater. But ain't nothing greater than what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad put down. You will have to return to this. And we don't say that to be ostentatious. Because nothing is taught from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad's message where we don't invite you to go research it. Go and find out for yourself and you'll find that everybody got to bear witness to it because it's the greatest truth being expressed on the planet right now. It's the greatest truth. And the one thing about truth is, unlike religion, truth will never double cross itself. When it looks like truth is double crossing itself, it's only because somebody lying. Huh? And time will tell the liar. We were talking last week about our duty to the Messiah. And uh, in our lessons, where it talks about uh, what is the meaning of Lou and Cap. And it says the captain's duty. His what? His duty is to give orders to the lieutenant. But the lieutenant's duty is not to give orders. What is it? To teach the private soldier also train them. See, at the highest level of understanding of this, your Messiah is a captain. And I become one of his lieutenants. Teach the private soldier. Also train them. When uh, Jesus... In the, I think it's the book of Mark, somewhere around the eighth chapter, they said he came to Nazareth to teach. 
And it said the people were amazed at his wisdom. And then someone started talking about the circumstances of his birth. And when they start talking about the circumstances about Mary getting pregnant, you know how we do, and everybody talking now, then the, it went from being amazed and adoring the man to despising the man because of Mary's situation that came out of gossip. Notice that. Then Jesus looked at them amazed because of their unbelief. Look what the scripture says now. And he could perform no miracles there. Where there is no faith, he can't work what you're trying to see. The change you're looking for because you don't want change in yourself. So it says, so he was amazed at their lack of faith. He gets to another situation and the man is telling them about his daughter or son and the man says to him, I would not have bothered you. I went to your disciples, but they could not change this. And Jesus said, oh, ye of little faith. So we went from lack of faith now to some people that got faith, but they just got a little of it. Then he gets to a situation where he sees a captain. The captain's not even a believer. But the captain had a servant that no doctor could help, and he felt that Jesus was the only one that could help his servant. Now watch this captain. Jesus said, come, let us go to your home where we can take care of. He said, look, I'm not even worthy to have you in my home. I don't believe in your God. I believe in you. But I don't believe. So he's a Roman captain. He said, but I'm a captain. And I know when I tell a man to do thus and so and another one to do thus and so, it's done. Because as a captain, I know I got authority. So I only have to say it and it's done. Are y'all listening to me now? He says, so you don't have to go to my house and perform no miracle. I know if you just say it, my servant will be healed. Because I see you with even greater authority than I have under Caesar. Now he went from lack of faith to a little faith and now Jesus said no greater faith have I seen in all Israel here's a man who believe if I just say it is done man if we believe the Messiah today like that can you imagine what would happen to our lives and what would happen to the people that we're in the midst of Because when you got little faith, you're still waiting on God to do something. Not realizing that it's already done. We're waiting because Allah's going to bless us. But when you got great faith, you don't say, I'm waiting on Allah to bless me. You realize you've already been blessed. And say, my God. I'm just not acting on it. I've been waiting on God and found out he waiting on me. I'm wondering what's his problem? Why don't he hurry up and get done? He's been sitting there wondering what is my problem? Why are you not exercising your faith? See, the Messiah is somebody who believes 100%. And from what I understand, his mind is one with the mind of the God. So one of the disciples says to him, when will we see the Father? And he would say to them, have I not been with you all this time? And you say, when will I see the Father? Yea, when you see me. 
you see the Father. How dare you try to go around me to get to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad? When you see me, you're looking at him. He's operating in me. That's why he wanted my mind to line up with his mind. Not so his mind could be like mine. So my mind could be like his. Just as his is like the God that raised him. That's an advantage for us because we don't believe 100% yet. So we need these little extension cords. We can't get plugged up right to the thing. Let's, so we always say he's an extension. Oh, the honorable Elijah Muhammad, you ain't that close. I'm not that close to the light, so I need an extension cord. It's all right. The light's still on. <laughs> So he starts out like the lieutenant. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad is his captain giving him order. And he's teaching the private soldier and training us. See that? Now he's sitting in the seat. And he basically is the one giving the order. He's the, he's the you, you um, receive, obey, and pass on, right? To the sender who relieves you. All orders, right? Not some of them, right? All orders. From where? The commanding officer. Everybody recognizes the root and the origin of the orders. They start from God. Because nobody knew what to do till God came. You can't go around Fad Muhammad and get something greater from Prophet Muhammad. You got somebody that's here and you going to look for somebody that's not here. Talking about you did something greater. That's a trick. So he comes and he gives an order, then he goes away and someone is carrying on his place. He made me to take his place among the people and now he's given the order. And see the sentinel, as they relieve each other, one prophet from the other, they're never divided against each other. Right. They pick up where the other one left off. Because they're all connected with the commanding officer and order. This is beautiful, man. Yes. Then there's the officer of the day. And the officer of the day is the one that we should be focused on. Why? Because that's the, that, whatever day it is, that's your day. And whenever your day comes, ain't no sense in you looking for an officer of another day when one is in there on your day. So, so, so the general order, it obligates you to obey the officer of the day. Are you following? You can read wonderful things about Moses of 4,000 years ago, but he's not here. Jesus of 2,000 years ago, but he's not here. Prophet Muhammad of 1400 years ago, but he's not here. But Farrakhan is here. And that is the officer that we have right now. He's commissioned. God got his hand on him. He's commissioned because he's answerable to God. God never came and commissioned me. I hear a lot of people talking about the Lord called me and he talked to me this morning and then I wish I could say something like that, but it just ain't happened. Huh? I'm not a commissioned man. I'm trying to help a man in his commission and help a man with his mission. I'm not answerable directly to God, I'm answerable to him. 
Huh? That's, right. That's why I said respect to him is respect to Allah. Right. Honor him, honor Allah. Obey him, then you obey in Allah. That means if that man calls me up and says, Brother Rodney, I want you to do dust, dust, and dust, then I do just what he said. I've obeyed Allah that day. I could try to ask myself on some other day, was I obeying Allah? But look, if I did just what he said, why? Because he's one with him. And then what I'm saying is part of teaching and training, but look, it's got to be in line with what the captain wanted. Huh? That's duty. And what was duty? It, it was the activity of my love for him. And where you have love and no duty, then the absence of duty starts minimizing your love. Pretty soon it just disappear. It's just some words. I love you, but there ain't no actions behind it. And without actions behind it, the love just starts dissolving and go away. Might have been a little something there before, but love is greater than just some emotion, right? The, 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 the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan teaches that it's a creative force. Love is, love is the love of the originator of the heavens and the earth. And what he said, uh, it's great because you and I start out, we're microscopic. You can't even find us except you find a microscope. And to think we made it from that. You traveled without eyes. You went from one place to another place and didn't even have a brain. Just think of this over for a minute. So it takes intelligence for any living thing to go from one place to another and to function. Where did the intelligence come from if you didn't have a brain? How did the sperm know where to go? And then once the, 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 the egg and the sperm come together and you got a clot after the first cell of life, it knew that it can't survive as a clot. Man, that's heavy stuff though the Quran gives you. Can't survive. And look, it leads from being a clot to an embryo. But guess what? You can't survive as an embryo either. And these physical stages are to help give us a picture of our own spiritual growth. Something that we would not be able to see had not Allah given us a picture of it. And guess what? Just like you can't survive as a clot, you can't stay like you are. You have to keep developing. You have to keep growing. You have to change. Huh? You have to become more like him or you and I would just die in the wilderness of North America. Some people are stubborn. And I get it. I ain't changing. <laughs> I ain't trying to change nothing. But guess what? You can't survive like you are. You can start out as a follower the honorable Elijah Muhammad but if you don't keep growing you'll be around there but you won't be a follower you'll be a colored man a colored man is somebody that is one thing but they color it so you can't see it for what it really is look what the Lord did to, to Cain he colored him he said I'm going to put a mark on him that's coloring now nobody will really be able to see him for what he really is. He's a liar and a murderer. So the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, he taught us that a disbeliever and a hypocrite, they're really colored people. They stay among the believers and they color themselves to look like they believe but something totally different is happening on the inside. You follow? So, so part of our duty 
one of the most important parts of our duty to the Messiah is to get ourselves together. Here's a God described to us. He wouldn't even come to us to after he studied 42 years. He didn't rush it. He might have been saying, if I don't help myself to get better, wiser, stronger, more powerful, I might not be able to help nobody else. And you know, you really got to ask yourself, if you can't get yourself better off, how can you really help somebody else get better off? So it seemed like failure to work on your own development, you become derelict in duty. Because if you love, well, I love myself, well, why aren't you working on yourself? Why are you still the same way? Mm. So this God comes under the name, the honorable Elijah Muhammad said, Fard. And this name he said, it means one you're obliged to, one whom it is obligatory to obey. He said the name, he, he wears the name that corresponds with the prayer of the Muslim, the first prayer, Fajr prayer. Where Fajr prayer, you're obligated to come out of one state and get into another state. What's the state you in before Fajr prayer? Sleep. And sleep feel good when you get into it. And to break sleep for prayer. Saying the words, prayer is better than sleep. See, it's a ritual until somebody comes with the deeper wisdom of what it represents. Um, obligation. The people who follow the Torah. We talked about that a little bit last week. And, and so they say, we believe in what God revealed to Moses. Well, now he reveals to Moses, ultimately, Moses, I'm going to raise up among thy brethren, one like unto thee. So this person is not going to be Moses. It's going to be somebody like Moses. But it's somebody coming. I'm going to put my words in his mouth. See, you're going to obey this servant. But the people that follow Moses, they don't want to follow the one that Moses prophesied would come that would be like him. Are you following now? So when you look at that world, you're finding people who are angry because the Honorable Louis Farrakhan say, we are the people of God's choice. You think they're angry because he fights the Jews back point by point as they attack him. They may be a little irritated about that. What they really are angry about is that he said we are God's chosen people. We have claimed a spot. And if you go look up Jabus, you'll find it's another name for the key city. Go look up Ariel, and it's another name for Jerusalem. And then go look up Salam, and it tells you this was another name for Jerusalem. And out of Jabus, and out of Ariel, and out of Salam, you get Jerusalem. The original men who built the city. We are the ancient people. Who were there before anybody was there. And anybody that's claiming it over us is really counterfeit. And they want to make us like we're counterfeit for claiming our own. When I stood up to say... I will accept my own to become a member of the fruit of Islam. I wasn't just joining a little group 
in Chicago that was connected with a little group in Philadelphia. When I accepted my own, I accepted myself all the way from my point of origin as an original man of the planet Earth. I'm claiming Northern Africa, which is where Judea sits. I'm claiming Northern Africa, which is where Saudi Arabia sits. That's my own. Are you following now? You say, well, brother, that's the Middle East. They came up with the term Middle East in 1901. And Church, Winston Churchill started using it and others, and they talk about, and that confuses you and me. And you forget that that's Northern Africa. And if it's Northern Africa, it's easy to see that it had to be people of color. But the people who are calling us anti-Semitic don't have color. So where did they come from? They came from Europe. And if you look even at Europe, it didn't exist until we put somebody there. You didn't have no residence there. They didn't go there and find some people and then conquer those people there. Wasn't nobody in Europe. But when we ran them from the original land and put them there, only after they were there, then we named it Europe. Before that, it was West Asia. Are you listening to me? So, so when I accepted to be an FOI, I didn't realize it, but as I kept studying, I realized, no, I accepted my lineage. I'm a part of that group over there. But they're angry because the Honorable Louis Farrakhan said, we are the people of God's choice. We are the real children of Israel. So, so a duty to him is to expose. I've heard him say from his own mouth some of the advancements in this world. In this civilization would never have taken place had it not been for members of the Jewish community. There are some, he said, that have done good for civilization, but there's some bad actors. Right? And he said, My duty is to expose them. So wherever he's putting the light, we've got to help him to hold that light. Not to kill nobody, but to expose them. You got to get the people out that's menacing this. Our people are on every show talking about white supremacy and don't know the architecture of it. But the Messiah is made to know it. And because he's made to know it, all we have to know is him. And the more we know him, if we love him, then we'll keep duty to him, which is the activity of our love. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, they're, 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 they're angry in the Christian community about it. But here the Quran says of Allah to the Messiah, he will teach him the book. He's going to teach him the wisdom. He's going to teach him the Torah and the gospel. Well, if you already gave it, to Moses, why are you teaching it to the Messiah? If Moses was the deliverer and delivered the people, do we need to go back over that if they're delivered? No. See, um, the deeper wisdom of the Torah wasn't given 4,000 years ago. We're at the time where the deeper wisdom of it is to be shown. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad called it a hidden wisdom. We hid it from someone. And the real Moses, according to Jesus in the book of John, he don't even, I don't even know that he ever mentions Pharaoh. 
Go in the Synoptic Gospels. I don't see nowhere where Jesus talks about Pharaoh and you being delivered from Pharaoh. The, 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 the Moses he talks about, and he said, I've come to fulfill the law of Moses. He talks about a Moses that lifted the serpent of the wilderness. But that's another whole assignment. That's another whole place. That's not Egypt. And the serpent of the wilderness being lifted up so that the son of man would be lifted the same way. Well, they were lifted in the wilderness with strong law. The people that lived in the caves and the hillsides of Europe, which was West Asia, we now call it Europe. Strong law lifted them. You got stuff hiding from us in plain sight when it's hidden. And if God got anything to do with hiding it and keeping it a secret, you'll never know the secret until he reveals it. So you look at how many years. They got something on Netflix now, and it, 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 it at least teaching you a little history of the Bible and, 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 and how it was considered sacrilege to take it out of the Latin Vulgate. But hell, if they put it in Latin, they had already taken it out of the Hebrew tongue. And the, you'll see that everybody that tried to translate that book, their life was in jeopardy. And this, and when you watch this thing on Netflix and it deals with Henry VIII and others, see the years are, are piling up. They're going from 1513, they, they're about at 1532 now, but I said in a few more years it'll be 1611. When King James comes to power after Henry VIII is gone, when King James gets in office, he has them translate that book. It was considered sacrilege, which Tyndale did, which Wycliffe did, and others. But until they translated that book to the English tongue, King James had an army. They couldn't come get him. They took over the church. That's why that queen I was talking about over there, she's the head of the church. When they crown her, she's anointed to be over the church. The church's leader. So you all might need to turn that heat down. Cut it off. I see some people fanning. <laughs> Well, anyway, they're angry because the real identification of Jesus takes us beyond a 2,000 year point. The man we're reading about, see, that man that we're reading about, 75% of that that's discussing him ain't got nothing to do with 2,000 years ago. We're living in that period right now. So as we speed that up, then you have the revelation of the Quran. The Muslim world is angry because they believe that Prophet Muhammad settled it all. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. Does the world look like God has settled everything? No, sir. Look at the condition of us. Even that are in the houses of worship. Even if we were saved. We're proving that we're unable to save others. If that don't humble you, because you got a lot of boastful people in religion, you get a teacup of wisdom and you just go off. No, it'll happen because the, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad promised uh, the minister, brother, when you come into the knowledge of who you really are, it's going to take something to hold you down. Well, imagine what he's received. Just, just calculating on what he suffered. And you and I ain't suffered a fourth of that. And we done went off already about who we are. So, um, they believe Prophet Muhammad has settled it all. And obviously, the world don't look settled. In fact, the Muslim world's been turned in on its heels. Or on its head. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan says. So I'm, I'm bringing all this up to say our duty 
to the right man at the right time puts us in a key position. The first thing is, if we follow him, we can't fail. Can, you know, somebody asked the question one, what would you do if you knew you couldn't fail? God, just imagine how that's revolutionary for your life. You do a 180. Because oh, it's a whole lot of stuff you ain't even attempting because you don't even think you could accomplish it. So people are waxing fat off positive mental attitude. They can go around the, the world teaching it and everything. You get fired up in a session. But there's no guidance beyond that point. You try to, you try to just stay positive about yourself for 24 hours. That's an assignment right there. And imagine, man, I, I, I can't even fail. I want to do this. All I got to do is go do it, and it's happening. Now, a man that knows God, according to the minister, he said, the wide awake man is the man that knows God. He's, he's not a believer. And you have to remember, and Muhammad speaks once, the honorable Elijah Muhammad put, there was a time that there was never any concept of belief between God and man. We didn't even have a concept of belief. We knew he was God. And guess what? We knew that he shared his essence with us so we knew what we could achieve. Just imagine how we lived then. But now that we have, that we have been taken and um, sort of saturated in falsehood, it's very difficult to hold on to belief. That's why some people turn disbelievers. So part of keeping our love for the Messiah alive is tied directly to duty. And the minister said, if you've been with me for a number of years and you're still poor, I had his note down. I was looking at it the day before yesterday. He said, then you need to check your connection with the God that I represented to you. Because your, just your faithfulness over a period of time, you're guaranteed favor from him to improve your and my condition. So, you know, our, our work family on ourselves um, already guarantees us monumental work. That's why the Messiah can say greater works will you do. It won't be greater in quality, but it'll be greater in quantity. Because the Jesus of 2,000 years ago, he tells the disciples to go into all the world. But here's a man that has gone into all the world, three world friendship tours. And he believed. So he got up and he went and saw people that he never met before in his life in cultures that he never lived in. Talking about the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. And when he got there, the love for him was so intense that you would have thought he knew these people all his life. And that was his first occasion to meet with them. So what the messenger told him was that Allah has gone before you, brother. He's made friends for you all over the planet. Now, now, if we're with him, I guarantee you, you go to some of those places. You tell them you're with Farrakhan. Right, right. Come on. They're going to feed you. They're going to make sure you're comfortable. They're going to give you drink. And then after they feed you and make you comfortable and you get your drink and everything, then they're going to be sitting in front of you because they want to be fed. What would happen if you was with him and you ain't even studied? You ain't even in a position to feed nobody because you haven't really fed. You say, well, I was, I was in the hospital, but I never took the treatment plan. Uh, so, so, you know, as we get ready for activity, because a whole bunch of knowledge and wisdom is nothing without personal performance. Men can't make things happen and there's no performance. Right. Yes. 
So, so the week's coming up, we got to perform. Huh? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm taking my time to talk like this because, you know, there's always talk, but it becomes cliche. This, the, 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 the world of Judaism, the world of Christianity and the world of Islam is left with rituals. That's all it has, rituals and ceremonial things that you go through every year. But the deeper wisdom, sure, uh, you can make Hajj. Yes, you can circumambulate around the Kaaba. But remember, the Kaaba housed all the false gods of that time. And once Islam had conquered back in Mecca, uh, the prophet, peace be upon him, who was operating like a captain, he could have ordered somebody to destroy all of the false gods that were set up in the Kaaba, but he did not assign them to do it. He did it himself. He saved that one for himself. And it happened to be 360 of them. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said he would not have left a sign if he was the end of signs. So what would the Muhammad after him do? By bringing the knowledge of God, he makes you make a 360 degree turn yes, sir. from being completely ignorant. Oh, we're supposed to go get four devils. Well, the first devil you're supposed to get is ignorance. That's what the minister told us when we first stood back up in the early 80s. He said, stop looking for the white man. Ignorance is your greatest enemy. Right. You can't get rid of that unless you study. Yes, and you ain't going to study until you accept the teacher and the teaching. Mm. False pride is a devil. Let's round them up. Every Muslim should get four devils. Let's round them up, see? And there are things that hinder us uh, from becoming the great beings that God's presence is designed to make us. It's supposed to be all over for the devil now. But we can't do it, the minister say, until something's done in et internally. And that's where the condition of the mind and the heart have to make that yes, kind sir. of change. Yes, Ain't nothing can't be done out here. The black world here could save the entire planet of the darker people. But they've, they've cursed us with the religion of individualism. Everybody doing their own thing. And, 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 and people want to showcase us because we're willing to follow order and instructions like we're weak because we won't jump up and do our own thing. And the minister said, that's why this is called a wilderness because everybody's doing their own thing. The people who conform to an order and try to do their best to live in that order, they're not weak. They're people who had ideas. They're pe but the success of a man don't come through a whole bunch of people that got their own ideas. It comes to people who know they got greater. You should have something because the essence of God is in you. But they learn how to submerge their ideas to get behind his idea and embrace his idea like it was your own. That's what made the nation of Islam successful. It wasn't that everybody came to the messenger was stupid and didn't know nothing. Hell, he brought brilliant people with him, but they loved him enough to submerge their brilliance, their own ideas, right? And by doing that, by doing that, they were able to further the nation in a way that people looked on it with great admiration. And we're talking about it shook the kingdoms of this planet. 
Well, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan struggles now with that same thing because he's sitting in that seat. So the duty, the first duty, you know, to that messenger is, is our own self-development because that's the greatest witness we're going to have. Eventually, folks are going to sally out. But the minister said, he took me and narrowed my focus. You think the minister didn't start off universal? How to give birth to a God? He said he's sitting in the temple. The message had been building up in him for 15 years. He, he, even, he wouldn't even teach it. And it wasn't until a few years after he stood back up that he started teaching that. Because he said if he started teaching that at the time they were in the temple, first of all, it wouldn't have been understood. So, you know, so we, we, we really have an opportunity now for, for the kind of growth, but I'm not talking about something that's supposed to take a long time. Our adversary, they don't believe in God. They know him. Go look at the conversation the devil is having. He starts off saying, as I said to you then, Respite me to the day they are raised. Well, why can't you, why are you talking about the day they are raised? If you're the one with the power, nobody has to be raised. No, he said, you don't re recognize who I'm talking to. Right. Right. I'm talking to a God. I don't care how much power I got. I don't have, care what I have. Uh, I know when he comes, nobody can stop him from raising us. Just, just, just let that sink in. So a man looks at a, uh, you want to drink Farrakhan? No, I don't drink. Uh, you want milk? You want orange juice? That's me. This is me and that. You know, minutes had to tell him if a gnat took something from you, you only had a power to call the gnat back. It won't even bow down to you. It's what I look like bowing to you. I don't care what you have of milk. If you got milk, you stole it. You got orange juice, you stole it. Because the Quran say, ask them, who created the heavens and the earth? They will say Allah, then they say, well, why don't you obey him then? Because I've been made different. My nature won't let me bow to that God. I'm 100% wicked. And we're held up because we don't think he's 100% wicked. We're trying, no, he's... he's <laughs> we wasted a lot of time and then you think because we go try to do a black thing that we hate white people that, that you don't have to hate nobody else you know what hate is you got that cup of poison you drank it and wondering why the other person didn't drop dead right. Right. Go ahead. Go ahead. And, the, and the poison's in you that's what hate does the ministers say hate is beneath us only one allowed to hate is Allah himself. He said, because he hates them with a perfect hatred. I don't know how to perfect hatred. So it doesn't mess me up. So I don't have time to hate. And ain't nobody evil because their skin is white. It says he taught them to do this devilish man. That was an orientation class from a black man. The people that started on the island of Pilan wasn't white. Well, you know, it was 59,999. Yeah, but those were black people who were unhappy. And it taught you where unhappiness can take you when you go get a leader and you really don't know where he's taking you with your unhappiness. So he said, because you've caused me to remain disappointed. Well, you're disappointed going on the island. With your disappointment. And when they get through working on you, you'll be something totally different than what you were when you was unhappy and disappointed. So, you know, um, we got so much rich history in front of us. But the best part of that history is no matter what happened, no matter what has happened to us here, we can come out of all of it now. And guess what? Not only can we come out of it, we can bring others out of it. 
And as, as, as Sister Ava said, the star in the ministry class, according to the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar, you stop trying to take the people to a law. You don't know how to take them to him. I don't even know. Take them to the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and let him take the people to the God. When did God raise you up that you're the one to take them to him? So we show you him. Well, brother, I came. I just want to know more about God. Then let me take you to the one who can acquaint you with him better yeah we know something you can't be around this wisdom like that but you can get so close to a water fountain the minister told us one day at dinner that the water misses you you got to stay in there you got to stay in your place if you want to catch some water at the water fountain if i get all up on the thing and push the thing there's a splash on my face i never get the water so don't get so familiar with him that you think you something that you really not. And then you somewhere and then pretty soon everybody can tell you not drinking the water. Because the minister said wisdom don't give you a judgmental mind. So people that are around judging everybody, that's because you're too close. And the water's flowing. It's a fountain. But you're not getting the water. But if you know how to stay in your place, as Brother Rasul, the son of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, my greatest fear, he always said, was getting too familiar with the minister, with what God is doing with him. But if I stay in my place, I can get that cup. And guess what? It could be running over. Because I'm not trying to make myself something that I'm not. Let God make me something and then Maybe help me to grow into an understanding of whatever that is. That's why the minister was told, brother, you don't have to teach. And he told Jabril, that don't mean I didn't have to study. He said, you don't have to study. You just get up and teach. And, but uh, he said, no, he's getting ready to reveal something through me. And you can't study what ain't been revealed yet. He said, but once he reveals it and it comes through me, now we can study it to see why, what he gave me and why did he give it to me? You, you follow? Yes, sir. I mean, we follow a, a humble man. Yes, sir. That's right. uh, and he even said, the convulsions in the earth, yeah, we got great leaders that have risen up and we don't deny what God has given them. He said, but we quote the honorable Elijah Muhammad because he wasn't a believer. He spoke with certainty about God and what God is doing today. So we start out there and then we quote others whose truth bears witness, not only to his truth, but even bears witness to him who bears that truth. Because truth won't double cross itself. Man, this is great. Huh? So I pray that we get ready for this weekend. We're not talking about gun violence on Saturday. As I said before, out of the vein of we got to stop the killing. Uh, we're talking about a knowledge that's already here that can stop it. According to the words of the Messiah, the knowledge to stop it is already here. We want to talk about that. And we should, we should talk about getting rid of the guns. And let's start with the people who don't even carry guns. And you could say, okay, you all don't carry guns, but how's that helping? Why do you come to the mosque to hire FOI for security? And you, you carry a gun. And you know these brothers don't carry guns. So what do you think they got with them? That you, you're willing to pay for some people to come secure you. What do you think they know? You, got, you have a gun and you don't even feel secure. 
this, this, uh, and, I, and I try to tell the mayor and all these people, you need to think of that because this is the only community in Philadelphia that don't carry guns. We're not talking about one or two people. None of us carry guns. And as the minister said, we don't even keep them in our homes. We don't live by the gun. And we're in the midst of people that are using guns to take each other out. The Red Sea of blood can just be parted and the righteous can walk right through it. And death can be all around you, but you're not dying. That's a blessing right there. Moses didn't say, behold, I'm going to move the waters and that. He said, behold, the salvation of the Lord. And that is salvation. We probably just take it for granted. But it won't always be like that. As I said last week, you know, we took some hits. And, um, but those that call on Allah, they always prevailed when we took those hits. Because hatred is all around us now. I hear the people now talking about the self-hatred is making us kill each other. Let me tell you something. The hatred that's out there for us is greater still because of what we believe. And the people who, who have the most to lose from a Messiah being present that they don't have control of. They're fueling hatred. To get hatred coming amongst us. And you see more and more of our brethren using their podcasts to lift Kyrie Irving, yes, sir. even Kanye, but yes. they're bringing the discussion up. Yes, now they're doing whole history lessons right. of the land over there and who were the original people and everything. And that they holding moss <laughs> right there on the thing. See, the Messiah's work ain't limited to us. If we want to sit down on him and not perform duty, it will not stop. No, sir. We don't have that kind of power. Mm -mm. No, the people out there, like they say, the rocks will cry out. The folks out there will just get up and start helping them and they won't even know they're helping them. Right? Yeah. Yeah, so this, this, has, this is stirring up now and, you know, as wiser people now, we're, we're watching God work to see where he's taking this first. Sometimes you can jump in it too fast. You don't even see where God is taking it. So the messenger says, some of you just want to act. But a wise man knows how to wait on a God to tell him when to act. And he warned Malcolm about that. The minister has warned others about that. But, you know, it's so tempting. And they're trying to get folk to jump on it. Be careful. This is a great time. So I thank you all for listening. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah. Listen. We, um, we're going to announce to you, but we have a guest student minister coming to us next week. Man, we want you out to hear this brother. And the brother is working again. COVID stopped us for a minute, but... We back out on the circuit. Right. And our own dear brother Nuri is looking forward to coming to Philadelphia. Um, we've got books. Now, the subject matter ain't about Babylon the greatest fallen. <laughs> it's not even about the fall of America. He's talking about how to, how to really love a black man and how to really love a black woman. Wow. Because if duty is the activity of our love, and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said that our, our enemies destroyed the natural love between the black man and woman, then not only do they destroy the love, then they destroy our sense of duty to each other. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's minimized. How, how, how successful your church, mosque, organization, or whatever is going to be if black men and women don't get connected again the way we were before the enemy destroyed that natural love. 
and they've taken us into all kind of avenues now. Uh, I, I don't even have time to go into it, but he's going to talk about that. But on Saturday, we got to talk about our killing each other. And we have to talk about what's leading to that. Because the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, he warned us when he first started getting revelation about it when they killed the people in Libya. They didn't kill Gaddafi on that raid, but he had a revelation about it. That a nation was going to be in trouble. He said it was Libya, so he went to warn the Libyans. Then he realized as he looked into what was given him on the wheel that was even deeper that the nation that they're looking to destroy by killing its leader is the, indeed the nation of Islam. And he saw them using young black men on the streets who are misguided, but energized, but misguided. And that self-destructive pattern that we're on, that they would use that as an occasion to be able to come in our communities wholesale and, and start killing us off wholesale. And so there are voices even in Philadelphia now. Why are you all against calling in the National Guard? You can't complain to the mayor once the National Guard are here. You know why? Because the mayor has no power over them. You can't complain to city council. You can't even complain to the governor once the National Guard are in. Well, they didn't read me my rights. They don't read rights. Well, they were supposed to look for, they search and destroy. And so if you out there, you could just get gunned down. And none of that stuff will enter the courts once order is restored and they're gone and everything. So the National Guard operating, but what, what would bring them in? Our willingness to have them come because we say the killing is out of control. Will we be able to stop them from doing this? I don't know. That's in Allah's hands. All what the Messiah is asking us is that is that we're found at least being concerned about what's happening. Right. To our folks, we can't just sit on our laurels and let prophecy be fulfilled. Jesus. Not when we have a chance to beat prophecy. Right. So we'll be announcing that we're opening up on Wednesday night with our series of lectures to start dealing with this problem. If we can't change up here, you can forget all this running around out here with teddy bears and candles and stuff. It looks good for theater. Hell, but this ain't no play and no show. Something really got to be done. We know what works here because we didn't come here not knowing what it's like to own a gun. Most of us were gun owners. Most of us had, when I came to the ministry, I know we had at least 14. I had some stuff in my basement and stuff, and we had things around and tried to use them because they give you a mindset out there. You become demonic when you stay on the streets. You don't care nothing about killing nobody else. You think because we in here and they're bow tied and everybody's a punk. Brother Ishmael warned us about that. God is no punk. And I don't care how many people we have killed. They can run the numbers up. You ain't never going to outnumber how many people God have killed in this last 6,000 years. So anybody that's with God is capable of restraining themselves, but they're also capable of letting go of their restraint. No, no. This thing, this thing that, that we have here is people don't know who they are. I mean, in truth, that's it. And that, that's, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad put it plain. He said, you all were killers before you came to me, but now that I've given you what Allah has given me, you don't do it no more. It was just as simple as that. You came into the knowledge of who you are. And when you're not in the knowledge of who you are, guess what? That don't stop you from trying to identify with somebody. So you'll identify with anything that suits you at that time in your life. And the less you know how to read, the smaller your world is. Yes, Jesus. So it's easy for somebody to say, man, you just need to come join this and join that. And you'll, you'll give yourself wholeheartedly to that. Because you don't know anything else. Yes, sir. 
you know. So we have to expand. We have to expand that. So this this brother that's coming to us, I I I I pray Allah gives him everything that he needs to talk to us in this city, as he travels to many cities on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, and our nation. So I hope you will tell others to come on out. We're we're gonna have vending. We're gonna have some dinner sales and everything. But I mean. That's not more important than why we're coming together and what we need to talk about. And so now that we have our whole building, see, downstairs is going to be, be devoted to community uh, people coming out. We, we, we have to have Dr. Claude Anderson to come talk about a real program. And that's why the minister lifts his name because this man is courageous. He's got a real program of us coming out of this but it's going to take it's going to take some unity we got to kill the spirit of individuality you know to make something work you can buy farmland and everything but most people they don't even talk about hey we got some farmland it's not that important yet because we ain't even at that level yet see when the white man puts you as sister Ava used to say when you in survival mode your, your workshop of creativity shuts down. You're just trying to make it. So you can't even think about great things that we could be doing beyond that because we just, we just trying, to, trying to hang on. You know, it's the deaf language. What's up, man? I'm just hanging. You know, what's up with you, man? What are you doing? They're killing me out here. See, the language is all deaf. It's just really... Huh? I mean, really? So we, 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 we have to take a, 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 a real look at ourselves and study what he has done. That's called like a spiritual autopsy. And really look at, because the minister said the autopsy means that a dead body can talk to a person who's skilled at reading what a dead body is saying. That's why they take them. And the dead body can show you what happened to it. A dead body can show you uh, an event that took place. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Especially if they were murdered. Yes, sir. And by the time you collect that evidence, you just about know who the murderer is. Yes, Go ahead. You learned all that from the autopsy. So when we say God has come because we were the spiritually dead, you know, somebody killed us. <laughs> right? And somebody's trying to kill us now. And, and the stuff we're doing out there, we're just carrying out a procedure. Well, they just killed somebody in West Philly. But they didn't talk about we were already dead before we went and took that physical life. See? Because real death, the minister says, when you have lost the ability to reflect God. That's why Adam was told, this day you'll die when you eat from that tree. But he lived to be 962 years old. So did God lie? No. Adam died when he no longer had the ability to reflect God. Everything was downhill after that. You know? So if you're out for your first, second, third, or fourth time, this is your opportunity to accept the invitation of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan um, to come on up. I mean, symbolically, you'd be shaking my hand, but that's just a symbolic thing of you joining on with him. Right. You can't join him without joining the great wisdom that's being shared with him from God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And as we feed from his mind, I mean, light for us is greater. And our lives become more improved the more we feed from it. You can't stop feeding. I mean, you have to keep going. So... If, 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 if you want to think about it, fine. But we ask you to come on, come on out Saturday and certainly Sunday as our brother is with us um, to share with us from the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and from what God is giving him. He's certainly one of the lights in the class of ministry around the country, Brother Nuri uh, Muhammad. So we ask you to come on out and support him uh, and... Um, um, and be a part. This is just the beginning, but we want to have more events now. And that's what we were waiting on. Um, and now that we have the entire building, 
That's why you don't hear the organ going anymore. <laughs> That's all right. You know, organ's good if we sing in the right song. That's right. Yes. Sing the Lord's song yes. in this day, right? But uh, what we what we can do now is.